stick around because in today's video I'm going to teach you how to draw these stylized foxes like these two right here. Let's waste no more time and get into the video. Because if you know me and been following me for a little minute, you know that I have a little brand going on with the Kumiho and I like to draw many foxes many days. So I won't talk no more. Let's draw a couple of foxes and see how you can draw it in a really cool stylized graffiti-esque way. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, the first thing we're going to start off, as always, is a base shape. So here, we're going to just start off with this bow shape today. We're going to start off with a bow shape. Remember, when you have different base shapes, you can create different characters, same character, but different forms, just by changing the base shape. So for the bow shape, we're going to then put a center line across. So now he's going to be facing in a direction this way here, to the right, just like that. This divides the face, so one eye is going to be here, the other guy is going to sit here. We just do these two little dots. It looks like a scary uh, Halloween thing right now. But that gives us an indication of where the eyes are going to go. So here, let's just do a circle for eye number one. Real simple, no detail right now, just keeping it loose. And a circle for eye two. This circle is going to be further away from the audience, so it's going to be a little bit smaller than this and have more squidged more of a squid shape, more of a circle, just like a grape, grape shape. And that's a great shape. Next, we're just gonna draw some lines around the circle, keeping the pencil loose the whole time. Like so, that's a lot better now. This just gives the indication of the bags under the eyes, gives it some more detail, a bit more realism to the form. And next we're just going to draw a line connecting the two here. This is the bridge of the snout or the nose area. And now for the nose, we're going to end up doing this triangle here. We won't keep the triangle shape, but we just gives you an indication the nose is going to sit around here. And for that, you're just doing this little love heart shape. And for this, you want to draw a small C across and then shade down like so. This will give it way more three dimension to the nose. 3D, it's just a cheap thing to get, make something look super detailed, super fast. For the eyes itself, I think I'm going to give it some eyelashes. So don't be afraid to cut across the line like this. And then the same would be for this here. Like so. When you're doing your drawings, just remember to keep everything super, super loose at the beginning, because later on, we'll, then we can then tighten everything up and uh, put in a lot more, a lot more details. Depending on how you want to do it, I want to give my fox some eyebrows. So for this, I want to give it like a surprise expression. So I'm just going to raise the eyebrow coming up, like so. I always like to throw up some lines around that baseline because sometimes you put a few things in which you can use later on. Say, for example, I wanted this, so then I could just take that, which was a mistake line, and then I can use that to give more of a brow indication. And then this eyebrow just coming down, just like so. Now for the front of the nose, Remember we're in like a box here, it's a three-dimensional shape. So I'm gonna come down and bring it this way here. And then pull the shape back. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this right here now, but I'm just throwing it in there. I don't know where it's gonna start or end. That's just a good place to build upon. You always wanna be building and looking for ways you can build onto your next shape. So once you have that in place, you should end up with something that looks kind of like this here. You can mirror this as well to this side. Just like that if you wish. Foxes have that white patch of fur, so I'm just gonna roughly throw it in. Look how loose my pencil is. This is what one thing I'm gonna try to teach is stay as loose as you possibly can. Don't worry about if it looks scruffy. Please don't worry about that. If anything, the scruffy is the beginning, the more unique it's going to look towards the end. And that's with anything, even an oil painting. If you're an oil painter, you know that 100%. Sometimes you just got to blacken, the, blacken all the shades, block it all in, 
and later on it's near the final strokes when things are pulled together. So looseness is key. Now for the shape of the face I want to stick to something quite I'd say dangerous like jagged so I'm going to keep my lines quite sharp on the point so one point there two point here and once you've got the shapes in just add the fur texture these little ticks you want to just do these little like that practice doing these sort of shapes like little waves and just be real free with the real free with the pencil when it comes to fur and um, fur and hair Sometimes it's best to let the pencil just guide it and don't be too exact or where you're putting lines in. Okay, just like so. And we bring this in here. So you have a triangle here and you have a triangle on this side here. And you will have something similar to this. I say similar because your lines are your lines and if you feel like I'm doing something you wouldn't have done and you would have added a few changes, do that now. Do that for yourself. I'm just here to guide you as always, but you are the creative director at the end of the day, so you might like a few different changes and you feel free to add them. Nothing set in stone. It's all loose, it's all free. So now we've got this, we think we're missing is the bottom of the mouth, top of the head shape and some ears. I want to do this one a little bit different than the usual, so for the head I'm going to bring, guiding off this line here, line here, just like so. And then from here, just follow that base we had in the first place. Like this. And the reason I'm doing this is I want the ears to be pinned back. And these are just two triangle shapes. One, really basic shape. It's just up, down. And that means it gives you greater indication of where you're going to put the next ear. And I want it to be also back. Perfect. If you're following it this far and you've made it this long, congratulations. It's not always easy to sit there and put the time in to better yourself at any craft you do. So the fact you're here today, you've already won. So give yourself a pat on the back, like legit. Not just being, saying that, it's, it does take time, it takes effort to want to improve any craft in your life. So, now I feel there's an empty space here. You're gonna find this when you're drawing. There will be empty spaces in your illustration. Sometimes. I can just use that more texture for the skin. You could add some marks. Or if you really want to create creative, you could add some sort of element to tell a story. So you could add, I don't know, like a hat here, um, a mark, a plaster, something that could have correlated to, okay, what's this, what's this character up to? Is he, a, is he like a scary character? Tell a story, basically, through visual cues. Come on, guys, we're doing good now. We're doing good. So. To me it looks like almost like he's on a motorbike or something because the ears are going back or he's up to something like mischievous. So that entail gives me a cool cool ways to make more of a story thing and start thinking then what I can add or take away from this drawing. I'm gonna add some more loose lines. Just because later on I'm gonna use those lines. And I think maybe for the mouth. We're just going to do it open, so you've got to imagine it's it's a three-dimensional shape and it comes out here and then it's going to be small, a lot of it will be hidden. Boom. And then we can just add some teeth. Like so. Now, now the head's in place, I'm starting to think where the body's going to go at this point. So. I'm feeling like it's either gonna go this way or I want the body curled. So like, I'm feeling like a real loose body line. So you, sometimes if you're struggling, just throw the line down how you feel like. Don't worry about the body yet. Don't worry about where we're gonna put the hands or anything. Just a form, something with some momentum, with some freedom. The more free you can get, the more expressive your art will become. So really keep that as a key point. So because it's coming now here, the chest is gonna be pushed back. So for that, I'm just going to keep it simple and draw a rectangle. Real simple. Can you see the shape coming already? Now that rectangle's in place, you should be able to see what my mind is thinking. You should be able to see, okay, it's coming inwards and then the stomach is going to be like here. And that's just two shapes. The top one being the chest, if you do it in a three-dimensional way, and that being shallow. 
is a 3D shape. If you are struggling with the basics, I highly recommend just getting a cube at home or a rubber like this, put it in different lights and draw it at different angles because everything is a basic shape. And um, once you've got the foundation in place, you can draw a multitude of things and then it's just up to you to add that perspective or add the other lines. So there's the body. I want to draw a skinny fox this time. Like this. And with the tail, because we've got this line coming here, I'm going to use that as well. And look, I'm just putting a line here and then giving the tail, it's a big tail, just like so. But one thing I want to see is look how messy this is, it might be actually a bit too messy for you guys. Uh, so I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll tell you what I'll do, I will, actually I won't just yet, what I'm going to do is I'll finish the rest of the hands and then I can tell you what I'm doing and pick up the lines because this is what we do if you've been following the channel you know that we put the rough lines in and the next step is picking up details um, so for this it, then we can just concentrate on the hands I'm not going to do the arms first I'm going to draw the hands and then after I've drawn the hands I'm using the shape of the body which is this I'll just darken it a little bit so hopefully you guys can see and then I'm using hands, so I feel like the hands, one hand's going to be here, right? If you want to hold a toy on hands, there's a whole video on my channel, you're going to have to go dig for it. So here's one finger, okay, then there's just two finger. I'm just keeping this hand, I have like a basic form, and this will just be like a basic one. One, and maybe two, I have it, so he's holding something. I'll tell you what we do actually, we do hold like a like a spray can, okay? So here is the second hand here, one, two, and then obviously pinky out, pinky out, mm, might be off the page, a little bit annoying, but you can, you can use your imagination, you know, you know what's happening here. And then he's got a spray can, okay, the story is being told now, okay, so he's like a street fox, spray can, and then he can have a name, and then you can have like his tag behind him here, you know, boom, Soltep, or whatever your name is. Then, once we know here, we know that it's like pitting Lego together. We know that this hand somehow has to connect to this point. Boom, boom, boom. Obviously, it's not going to connect straight because he would have tiny T-Rex arms. And uh, if you want a T-Rex tutorial, that's a whole different story. So for this, the hand needs to be realistically folded. So it's going to come down like so. Same with this one. It's going to come out and then it's going to connect boom to the elbow joint it always helps to study real life anatomy um, and then you can easily manipulate it later on in your drawings but for now I'm just going to take you straight through a shortcut I've done all the hard work so pretty much you don't have to at this point I can just make you skip it but I highly suggest you don't skip it <laughs> yourself but I'll just give you the cheat codes basically and then you can go back and then decompartmentalize it all you know what I'm saying break it down yourself but you're here putting the work in, so no pressure, just enjoy, enjoy, and hopefully today, well, we will, for sure, have some really cool looking boxes. And then that easily connects. Look how easy we made that, you see? We could have stressed and been like, where's the hand gonna go? But now we just easily connected the whole thing together. And then you have a completed character. From this stage forward, if you want to add clothes, you can add clothes, it's all there. So you can add ribbons on the arms, um, like that, you could just you can do anything now because the basic is the basic form is down. Now it's up to you to add anything. You can add things on the outside, characters are getting involved. And that's where the real fun element of character design comes in. There's a lot of loose lines and now it, I'll show you how it all pulls together. So if you stay with me, uh, congratulations. Now I'm gonna do the thing we always do on the channel, grab yourself your black or a darker pencil. And this is key. All the lines you want to keep, you select it. This is like a selection tool. Boom, boom, boom. Keep picking the lines you want. Anything you don't want, you rub off. And if things are looking empty, like here, this is what I'll do. Grab this pencil, and I'll just look at that, okay? And once the lines are down, I can look and say to myself, okay, I want. I actually like this line here. Boom, and then it comes down, like a fold. That's a little cheat that you can use for yourself if you ever feel like the design's a bit empty and you want to add the illusion. What's not even an illusion, it's actually adding more, more to it than just a simple structure. 
Anyway guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna time lapse it now, darken up all the areas, you do the exact same with your dark pencil, and at the end you should have something that looks similar. So, let's go! Really cool design is back. I really like how this turned out. If I was going to finalize this, I'd grab some tracing paper, I would trace up the lines I want super neat, and I'll start drawing it up into a final design. And remember, guys, sketchbooks are used for sketching, so keep it loose, have fun with it, and don't try and create masterpieces every time you pick up your pencil. Just remember that we're here just to have fun. So enjoy the process as we go together. Anyway, let's do fox number two. I've given you one today, I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to stick in with you guys and do the work so we all grow and get better as artists together. So, like we said earlier about the base shape, let's see what happens when we change the base shape. So we had the bow shape here, let's do more of a... It's like spaceship shape, right? More like a spaceship, okay? And this is now change with the same principles we learned right now, this will change the whole design straight from the foundation. So foundation is key because that will influence what happens next in our movements of the drawing. So here's center line, boom, we have a face in this way, so we've got both angles. Here, let me make sure we have some room, there you go. Here, once again, we're gonna draw the eye. So here, I'm just gonna draw loosely. This sort of circle shape, this kind of, I don't know what you just say, it's like a, like a, like a hexagon kind of shape there for the eye socket, and we're gonna build that in a second. And the same for this here, like this, it's gonna be a bit smaller and a bit more squidged in. But if you wanna add some more dimension, I can follow the shape of this as well. And I'm gonna use this foundation shape to build upon. Okay, so we've got two sockets there. Bring this a little bit closer, and there we go. Perfect. From here, the bridge of the nose is gonna be here. So it connects the two with this arch. Okay, and now we've got that in place, Let's start building upon the eyes before we move any further. So for this, I'm going to give it some bigger eyes, some just circles. One circle, and then on the inside here, we're going to do another circle, like so. And we're going to use this as an eyelid. Just like that. Up here, I'm going to draw a line there, and I'm going to mirror that off here. That will be where the cheek is raising, just below the eye. So this is cheek, or the cheek structure, like so. And we give it some of those kawaii, kawaii, kawaii circles. Just, I always do it, stylized preferences. You don't have to put that in, but I'm just going to put it in for now, just so it's in place. This time I want the nose to come more out, and this time we're going to make the nose more bigger. So where this is like a little love heart, we're going to turn this into more more of a square, like that. That kind of shape is what you want. And then we're always going to keep loose lines around, just around the shape. The reason we're keeping loose lines around is because sometimes when you have some loose lines, you can use it as indentation or folds in the skin that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. So by keeping it loose at the beginning, we get more of a dynamic range of line work we can pick from later on down the road. So we're just setting ourselves up. It's like a game of pool, basically. You want to set certain things in motion so later on when you're playing you can give the advantage or give yourself the best advantage you can whenever you're drawing. Here I'm going to do a smaller snow at the front and bring it in like we did here, similar here. For this I want more of a different emotion so instead of coming up I want it to come across like here and probably see more of the teeth. So we're just going to do this kind of shape to follow this line. And because we have this line in place, it's easier now to put underneath the chin. Just like this. And now it helps us as well to place the fur of this side. So here we're going to put the fur in. Really rough. And the same here. Really loose line work right now, nothing's committed in. Later on, we're going to pick what we want and leave. Okay, guys, and we should end up something that looks like this. And for the teeth, we just do little di little triangles coming down. Completely up to you how you want to do the teeth. Jagged, more human-like. 
two teeth at the front. I'm gonna switch pencils quickly because this is getting so small. And for the eyebrows, we're gonna have him eyebrows being more up this time. He just one looks like a more of a fatter fox, so I'm gonna lean into that as we go along. With this cheekbone now around the eyes, I'm just gonna do smaller circles around to give it that bag indentation. Pow, and the same over here, here. This kind of reminds me of something from The Simpsons, I don't know if you can see it, that dog character. That skateboarding dog. And the top, we're gonna to keep it closer down and bring it in like so. Now you have the basic shape down, you've got basic shapes and that's a lot easier for us to build upon. So for the ears, I'm gonna have one ear coming up. I have these ones going back, so I'll do something a bit different. And then one ear coming up, like so. And then the same ear, just a triangle upwards. But a rounded off edge. Just like that. Now this is very, very basic. And I'm just showing the basic form because then it's easier for you guys to get a gist of it. But what I would actually do naturally when I'm drawing something or come up with a concept design for a client. Okay, so I have the basics in place. And now look for what spaces are empty. Bridge the nose, example. Okay, I'll just adjust that. And I want more lines. So a pencil does the work. Look. Now you might see yourself, okay, I don't understand what's going on, but take it to a point. And then you can just say to yourself, okay, this fold here. So I'll just show you this, I'll darken up this area for you so you can see in person. There's a fold here, boom. And then there's this little, little indentation here. Boom, I'm taking that. So you're taking it bit by bit, and again, another fold. You see, those lines weren't there before, but because I sketched it in to begin with, I can start picking things up. And you might say here, okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. So there's a shape here, I know it's in, a, in the socket, so I'm just adding more of these lines that go around the eye. So then you start seeing things that weren't there before. And then I go, okay, this needs to be fixed up. Boom, fix up that line. And now this is how the design starts looking way more complex and has way more dynamic shapes in it and it's just more appealing to the viewer. So keep going with that, keep adjusting the pit lines in place. I'll just show you a few examples. This is how I'd naturally do it when dealing with it for clients. Okay, then you think, okay, here's a lot of space up here. Sometimes it's good to have an empty bit of space next to so much detail because that empty space adds to the detail because it's like a contrasting factor. The same if you put black next to white. But here I want to have, yeah, just to shape that. Because I'm thinking about space elements here on the whole page, the body is kind of have a similar shape to this today and be more. Mm, shall we do it that way? Yeah, okay. Cause just because there's space then I can show you more. Just like so. That's just the movement line of the body. Maybe we just do it more like this, I suppose. And the same here, we just do like a sausage shape this time. The whole body, there's no real detail. I'm just trying to line myself up later on down the, down the road. And then we get more complex. So with this, I'm feeling like maybe we have his arms crossed. So we can just draw the forearm of one here with a rectangle. And then the second one, hand's gonna come over like so. And then it's just gonna come in forearm and then back to the body. But look how I did the hands first and then I look for a way to connect it to the body. That's always a key element. Hands first, then connecting. And here I'm just gonna do an element of like a bag or something coming off. That's just a rectangle here. I can do a tutorial on clothes or other things like that if that's something that interests you. So let me know in the comment section what other things you'd like to see in later tutorials. Gonna do the fur again. This is the element that makes a fox look like a fox. Right now it could be a dog. But then we add this fur from the nose, come from this point to that point, and it just let the pencil 
it in for you. So it comes back with the face, straight across, like that. And here I wanna, I wanna add more folds on the mouth. And then just get like a cigarette or something. Something with a bit of character adds to it. And for the, for the tail, we have the tail going back here, fill out the space with the backpack. I think that looks nice, that makes more sense. So here is just literally draw a line and I'm just looking to thicken it, come up thin at the bottom and thicken up as I go. <laughs> really simple guys. Now that, there's not much to this at all. This design here, there's not a lot much to it currently, but it's not meant to be. It's like this, at the beginning there was nothing here, it was only when we got the dark pencil out, took the lines we wanted then we started seeing things pull together. And now it's like a basic, it's just like a, it's like imagine making like a salad, right now you've got the salad down, but there's no sauce, there's no special bits, there's none of the fancy bits you would add to a salad. So now we start adding to the salad, okay? So right now, you can say something like a little hat, okay? Little, little tick like that. It's more of an icon, by the way, than, than actual clothing. So it's just something that is a stylized preference. Okay, a little hat, he's got the cigarette, once again, a stylized preference. All it is, is a little rectangle that, the cool thing with smoke, a little tip, is it allows you to have these loose smoke shapes, okay? Look, so it sort of adds so much free flow to an image, and all you're doing is add in smoke, especially if you were to paint this already, you see? That, that looks, looks a lot cooler to me, it looks a lot cooler, it's got that free flowing element within the tight shapes. Mixing up tight shapes with loose shapes is always a good tip. The contrast, once again, contrast, contrast, contrast. Use it to your advantage in any way. Okay, put another pocket in the bag. Real rough, I'm just seeing where this goes. Okay, and I would say I'm happy to get the dark pencil now and start darkening out the whole image. I'll just draw a line at the bottom so it squares off. You wanna do the same at home. Take your time, put on your music, and uh, just chill out with it and see what you come up with at the end. I'm gonna time lapse now and then we'll have a final word and summarize the whole thing at the very end. And there we have it, guys and girls. That is how you at home can draw super cool stylized foxes like we have done today. Congratulations to you if you've made it this far, because this is a lot of work, man. What's this video, like half an hour long, I'm presuming? If you sat half an hour of your day just to improve, my God, you need to give yourself a pat on the back. You're doing good, you're doing good. Just turn up every day and we're gonna get there. Hopefully you've ended up with something that looks like this or something you are happy with. If not, just rewatch the video tomorrow try and get that little bit closer until you're at a place where you are happy with it. Not anyone else where you get happy with what you're creating. If you're enjoying these, you need to go say a thank you to everybody on the Patreon because they are the people who are allowing these videos to be completely free for the whole world to learn and get better together. So thank you everybody on the Patreon. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Anything you guys want to see next, let me know in the comment section, all that good stuff. Blow up the algorithm, get so up to number one. Let's see if we can make it. Bang, bada boom, keep creating, stay well, and uh, yeah.